constructing and designing this fort, we're looking at a lot of things happening. And during the time that they're designing this fort and getting ready for construction, you also have some laws that are shaping the way America looks and things, too. First off, you have Western expansion. A lot of states and territories being created past the Mississippi River. You also have laws dealing with slavery that come into action. You have the Fugitive Slave Act, the Compromise 1850, and the Missouri Compromise. And as all of this is taking shape, it's starting to pull and push the fabric of America. And in some cases, splitting people apart. But the entire time, the U.S. Army has to ship supplies to this island and build this fort, which makes for a very large list they have to put together. So I want y'all to think about some of the items you brought out here with you today. What are some items that you would bring out to this island if you had to live here and work here for an undetermined amount? Beer. Beer. <laughs> okay, cool. All right. Water. 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 So, what up? Clothing, tents, shelter of some sort. What up? Okay, yeah, so seeds for maybe some agriculture. Yeah, what else? Something to. Okay, so some fishing or hunting equipment. Yeah, sure. Lots of random tools, like supplies. Okay, yeah, so tons of random tools and supplies for that. What else? Water. Water. Because we have water, water everywhere, not a drop to drink, right? Yeah. <laughs> what about for fun? You're going to have some downtime, right? So we're going to bring out here for entertainment. We already got some beer. What are we going to focus on? Musical instruments. Okay, musical instruments. Cards. Cards, okay. Anything else? Books. Books. Would you want to write things to your family? Yeah, so you need pen and paper, right? So if you look at it, this is an extremely large packing list these soldiers have to put together. And it's everything from something as simple as pen and paper to the one million bricks that go into constructing this fort. It all has to be shipped out here. Fortunately, the Army is able to get supplies from a pretty local source to start with. These brown bricks and most of the supplies come out of New Orleans. And as these bricks are getting laid to mortar, the year's 1859. The next year, Abraham Lincoln's elected president of the United States. By Christmas, South Carolina has seceded from the Union. In the next few months, other states are going to follow that lead, including Mississippi. So now you have a bunch of U.S. Army soldiers and some construction workers on this island. It's April 1861 and the American Civil War just start. So now these soldiers are cut off. They have no way to get supplies and resources. They can't even get communication to find out what's going on around them. And as these soldiers are trying to figure that out, the Confederate government is getting ready to mount the raid to take this away from them. And when the Confederate soldiers and Marines get out here, it's pretty easy, actually. Because even though it's the US Army, they forgot one very important piece of equipment and weapons. So most of these guys get sent packing. They head back north to their home cities like New York, Philadelphia, and Boston. And for the next six months, the Confederate government's gonna take over this fort. And with that, this is all the fort they got. Oh wow. So they have to build up on top of that. They have to bring some earthworks out here, some wooden structures. They're bringing out cannons to defend this place. One of the guns they bring out here is called a nine inch dog ring. It's actually a pretty powerful gun for its time. And this cannon most likely is going to be mounted on the south side of the island. And by July, that gun's going to come in use. A Union gunboat shows up to the island and starts firing rounds at it. The ship can't get close enough because there's some submerged sandbars off the island. So their rounds don't hit the fort. But that Dahlgren, it can reach out and shoot over the ship and scare it off. After this small 20-minute skirmish, the Confederate government realizes the supplies and resources on this island need to be moved to New Orleans to help protect it. So they pull the cannons. They start pulling troops off the island. Start cutting supplies. And finally in September, the commander out here orders an evacuation. And with this evacuation order, he tells his troops to literally set the island ablaze to make sure nobody can use any supplies that are left behind. The smoke from this fire actually builds up over the horizon and can be seen almost 18 miles away. And that's where a ship called the USS Massachusetts is sitting. It'll sail up to the island, realize it's been abandoned, drop off some sailors and soldiers, put out what fires they can to save some supplies, and the US military controls this island again. And it will stay like that for the rest of the Civil War. 